Hello, welcome to this video mini lesson tutorial on effect size for chi-square and contingency table analysis. There are three different calculations for effect size, and these are actually, there are even more than this. But what we're gonna do is I'm gonna introduce you to one uh, effect size calculation for goodness of fit, one for two by two contingency tables, that's two rows by two columns, and then one, uh, effect size calculation for test of independence. There are actually more than this that are available, so I'm just kind of giving you the brief lowdown and forgive the bad handwriting here. So, goodness of fit, remember that is the kind of analysis you use if you have one variable. So that's just going to be like one row of data that is uh, broken into multiple categories. So in, in our situation earlier, we were looking at uh, students, total students by what kind of genre they chose for their independent book choice. So in this situation, you're going to be calculating the contingency coefficient, or C. And that's essentially a correlation measure for nominal data. So it's essentially the square root of your chi-square divided by chi-square plus N. And we're gonna use Cohen standards for interpreting the contingency coefficient. So if you have a contingency coefficient that's 0.1, that's small, 0.3 is medium, 0.5 or higher is large. Now, two by two contingency tables are a bit of a special case, and just really, really briefly, so a two by two contingency table is gonna be this kind of situation where we have uh, females and males, so that's one variable, that's our independent variable, and then our dependent variable of genre of book choice, and we're just breaking it down into fiction and nonfiction. And then you see this is our two by two table, one, two, by one, two. So it's a two by two table, two rows by two columns here. And so in this kind of situation where you have a two by two table, then you can actually use a different calculation for chi-square, which is a little, well, it might not look more simpler, but it actually is. So it's just uh, chi-square is your N, your number of cases, and then you multiply your A and D squares and subtract your B and C, and here's how they're labeled. So A, B, C, D. So you're multiplying A and D and B and C, subtracting those from each other, multiplying or uh, squaring that, and then dividing by, as you can see down there in the denominator. Now, remember how I talked about earlier, one of the assumptions for a two-way chi-square is that you don't have any cells that have less than five for your expected frequency. If you do, though, if you do have a really small N size, you can use, in a two-by-two -two table, the Yates correction for continuity. And the only difference between the regular two-by-two chi-square formula and the Yates correction for continuity is simply this additional term here where you're subtracting n divided by 2. This, you have to notice, is a very conservative estimate of chi-square, so it's going to be much more difficult in order to find a statistically significant finding. In fact, it's kind of controversial about whether or not to use Yates' correction for continuity at all. But if you do have a 2 by 2 contingency table, you can actually calculate effect size by, as phi, where that will vary from 0 to 1, Phi square, and that's the, you know I'm a terrible drawer, but that's the symbol for phi square. It is explained variance, just like R squared for correlation or just like eta squared for ANOVA. And when you find your phi square, you have the same standards that we used up here for the goodness of fit with Cohen standards of small, medium, large. Now, if you have, are doing a test of independence, so you have more than two, uh, excuse me, more than one variable, so at least two variables, then you can use Kramer's V. It, again, will vary from 0 to 1, and Kramer's V is simply the square root of x squared divided by n times the degrees of freedom for the smaller of either your row or your column. So in our example here that we've been using, here we only had two rows, females and males, whereas we had, I think, seven columns. So our row, we have fewer rows than columns, so our degrees of freedom here would just be two. So degrees of freedom, uh, and actually that's uh, 
2 minus 1, so it would be 1. So our degree of freedom here would be 1. So n times our degree of freedom. Now, here's the hard thing about Kramer's V. When you calculate Kramer's V, you can't always use these same standards up here. The standards actually shift based on the size and the shape of the contingency table. But essentially, larger tables will actually reduce the effect uh, size magnitude criteria. So if you have a really large contingency table, then a large effect size might be as small as 0.3. Whereas for a smaller contingency table, uh, an effect size of 0.3 would actually only be a medium size effect size. So I know this is a super brief introduction to effect size for chi-square, but what's important to know is that each of these different types of analyses, each of these different sort of cases of chi-square, if you will, each have a different calculation for effect size. And when, especially with Kramer's V over here, the standards for interpreting that effect size may be different. As always, let me know if you have questions. Thank you.